From Southeastern University, this is the Coach Bearfield Show with your host, Donnie Smith. From Southeastern University, this is the Coach Bearfield Show with your host, Donnie Smith. Good afternoon and welcome to the Coach Bearfield Show. I'm Donnie Smith. We're visiting with the head football coach at Southeastern University, Keith Bearfield, coming off of a thrilling triple overtime victory over rival Warner. Got to be a fun thing to go out and beat your rival, to be 1-0 in Sun Conference play, and to do it in such thrilling fashion. Well, it was a very satisfying win. It took us, uh, seemed like, forever and a day to, to get it done, at least almost two days to get it accomplished, but it was very gratifying. It was a big win for our players uh, to, to come out with a win under those circumstances against uh, a team like Warner who is uh, getting better and better every, mm -hmm. every year, and they posed a great challenge to us. We knew that they would be a, a, a big challenge to us on Saturday. Uh, we just didn't realize exactly how big, but it was a, it was a great win for our guys. From my perspective, I can kind of remove myself at times during breaks and just kind of appreciate what a great game it is. You probably don't have that luxury having to look forward to next plays and next series. At what point, if any, can you kind of sit back and appreciate what you saw Saturday night and Sunday morning? Well, it uh, probably wasn't until Sunday afternoon that we were able to, to really uh, let it soak in. Uh, we were so tired after the, after the game uh, Sunday morning uh, and then uh, we tried to get a few hours sleep, so we really didn't have any time to really sit back and reflect on, on what had uh, transpired uh, until Sunday afternoon. But we, we, did, we did enjoy the victory. We knew that we felt better uh, after the game than we would have if we had not won that game. Uh, so that was uh, an added benefit, but as far as really to sit back and think about it and enjoy it, uh, looking at the film on Sunday afternoon, uh, about three o'clock, uh, you know, things begin to sink in, and it was uh, uh, a great pleasure at that point. One of the big challenges the last two home games has been the lightning delays, having to start games or restart games after nine o'clock. What do you guys do with your team during that time? Are you coaching them up, or do you just kind of let them relax? You know, well, you know, I think in all of my coaching uh, career and, and playing career, I can only remember uh, one other lightning delay that. Uh, we had during a game, and that's when I was coaching at Evangel in a, in a playoff game. Uh, so that's uh, about 38 years of coaching, and not to mention all the years of playing. So I had no experience at this really until I came to uh, uh, Central Florida and experienced it the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, we don't do a whole lot. You know, we have them prepped, we have them primed, we have them ready, uh, we let them relax. You know, we, we don't try to put any pressure on them. We, we, uh, we want them to be mentally sharp when they go out. Uh, so uh, about uh, 15 minutes when we get the, the word that uh, everything looks like it's going to be clearing up, uh, that's, when, uh, that's when we start talking to them, get them moving around, start to do some loosening up in the locker room, uh, maybe start uh, talking about specifics to get them refocused, and then we get them out to loosen up. When you look at the maturity of this team, now you're in year three of competition, some players in their fourth year at Southeastern in your program, you had to be pretty pleased with the way that they were able to be resilient during the game on Saturday, dealing with the delays, dealing with the late night, and then also just kind of battling back from some of those turnovers. Well, you know, I, I told the guys, you know, we'd, we'd had a lot of practice doing this because for our scrimmage in, in, the, uh, in the preseason, we had a, a lightning delay, and, and it, we were sitting underneath the stadium for about an hour, mm -hmm. and uh, we went out and, and practiced. So, uh, you know, we had a little bit of prep that for that. Uh, Albany State the prior week, you know, uh, even longer wait, had to go out and play, and then, you know, that game couldn't be resumed. Uh, so our guys, uh, you know, this was a, a same song, third verse, as far as this season is concerned, and, and a year ago when we played Warner. Right. We had a similar situation, so it wasn't new to us. We'd, we'd uh, uh, walked this path before, and we come out uh, victorious. So, you know, our, our guys were, were, uh, were experienced in it, and uh, our maturity paid off uh, uh, in a lot of ways. You know, like you mentioned, you know, we have several guys that are now in their fourth year in the program. And so, uh, uh, you know, not really intending any puns, but it was kind of like water off a duck's back. As you look back at the game, you take the lead back and forth the entire time. You kick the field goal with just under two minutes to go to go up six. 
Warner scores with 59 seconds to go. Any concern in your mind at that point? Well, there's, there's always concern in a game like that and, unless you have it totally put away. Uh, I, was more in, I was more in shock that we hadn't intercepted that pass than, uh, than, they, uh, than they caught that pass. Uh, so uh, so we, we're down one. <clears throat> you know, quite honestly, uh, you know, I've been in tighter positions before with you know, being behind a touchdown with, uh, with less time and had uh, further yards to go for a, for a touchdown and we'd come out. So I knew, I knew it was uh, something that we could accomplish. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, I felt like you know, we will find out you know, where we are as a team uh, and how we can respond in this situation. And uh, the first response was as we blocked the extra point. Uh, that, was, that was huge. It was a big psychological turn, I think, for us uh, and not so much for, uh, for our opponent. So uh, we blocked the kick, we get the kick off, we move downfield, we get in field goal position, and we just don't execute the, uh, the, the field goal to, to win the game right then uh, with one second left to go on the clock. But, uh, you know, it showed me a great confidence in, in our players at that point. Uh, not so much the confidence the coaches had in the players, but the players had in themselves. They went out and they did what they had to do and they executed like more like seasoned veterans than a young football program that's only been in existence for three years. We got our first look at college football overtime in Lakeland last Saturday and Sunday. What was your thought going into the overtime period? It's a little bit different game, shorter field. What's the strategy from your mind? Well, the conventional strategy is, you know, to, uh, to win the toss and go on defense because you want to go on defense first so you understand exactly what you have to do when, right. you, when, you, uh, when you get the ball. Uh, there's a lot more decisions that you have to make. Uh, well, at least one more important decision on whether to kick on fourth down or go for it on fourth down if you have the ball first. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we, wanted to, uh, we wanted to win the toss and go on defense first. It didn't necessarily happen the way we wanted it to, but you know, uh, eventually it worked out for us. Looking at the defense, this is a group that even through the first few games of the season has continually made some big plays when the other offense has gotten close to the red zone. That was the case once again in the third overtime with Mark Myers, come, or rather Tyson Key coming up with the big interception. Well, I believe in, in overtime, in, in, in all the overtime periods, I believe we had two interceptions. Correct. I think you're correct that Mark Myers did have one, which was a big interception uh, in the second overtime. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, Tyson Key came up with uh, his interception in the final overtime to seal the deal for us. And, and you talk about, uh, uh, you know, strategy in, in overtimes. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't necessarily what we would have strategized to get the ball first in the, in the third overtime period. But when we scored and we were able to execute the two-point conversion, sure. that was a big psychological burden on the shoulders of Warner because mm -hmm. they couldn't make any mistakes. They had to score a touchdown, plus they had to convert a uh, two-point conversion. So uh, just to keep things going, not to mention, you know, it, it wouldn't have won anything for them. It would just, you know, kept the overtime periods going. So uh, those those things are uh, were huge all night long, but I very was very, very proud of, of both uh, Mark Myers and his interception in the second overtime period and, and Tyson Key being Johnny on the spot uh, to end the ball game and I guarantee you we were ready for it to be ended. <laughs> now you look to carry that momentum into another home game against Edward Waters. A little bit of unconventional offense with that option that they run, kind of a, a Navy or Air Force look if you will. What are some of the keys in stopping that offense? Well, you know, n number one we have to, uh, to contain their quarterback. Uh, you know, they have some they have three quarterbacks that uh, that execute their offense really well. Uh, we've got to just make sure that uh, you know we. I don't know that we'll stop them, but we've got to uh, you know contain their their output somewhat. And if we can control that, then we have a, a good chance of of uh, coming up well on defense and prevent them from getting into the end zone. Looking at your offense, what do you guys have to do to come away with a win? Well, I, I think we have to just stick with our game plan the way the way that we have uh, every game this season and the past seasons. You know, we ha we have to be steady. We have to uh, do a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage, and when we decide we want to pass, you know, be successful there, and uh, just take what the defense gives us, and and uh, uh, don't try to get uh, too greedy too fast, and and hopefully, uh, you know, things will start uh, working our way, and we'll gain some momentum and and uh, we'll come out on top. 
Keith Barefield is the head football coach at Southeastern University. His fire will be taking on Edward Waters Saturday night at Victory Field at 7 p.m. We'll see you out there. This is the Coach Barefield Show from Southeastern University, home of fire football.